We are going to start actually with the peachy keen crisp, not the pie. We're going to do the pie second because the peachy keen crisp cooks 20 to 30 minutes. There's a possibility. Mm, there's a possibility that we'll be able to taste it before we're done. Oh, and the fire's in California. I know. Good morning, Nina. Good to see you. Okay, so here's what we need. Um, I'm going to pull all this out. La, la, la. Okay, I'm using this baking dish. You can use like an 8x8. Eight eight. This is not 8x8. Eight eight. This is... Oh, ruler, ruler. Come here. Come hither. I just like it. It has handles and it makes me happy. So, you know what? I use dishes that make me happy. This is actually 8x10. Eh, you know, the news showed the packaging. It's primarily bagged peaches. Yeah, I know, except it had my Kroger store listed on there, so not doing that. Anyway, so there you go. Um, I'm gonna get the spray. Not that I would use the spray, but you might use the spray. So you get your eight by eight out, you give it a spray, la la la, and we set that there. You're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. I have already done that. So there you go. Now, we're gonna take a can of peach pie filling. Now this says extra peach, as if, some of them didn't have enough peaches, even though the cans are the same size. No, needless to say, extra peach pie filling, right? So there we go. No high fructose corn syrup and no artificial flavors. So there you go, extra peach pie filling. We are going to take our peach pie filling and our baking dish, and we're just gonna dump it in the bottom, okay? Come out, come out, come out wherever you are. Where's my little doodah? Okay, look. I have to get all the peachy goodness out of the can. La, 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 and the yummy syrup. I know, you're going, Cindy, calories, calories. How can you, you know, I was checking my medical record the other day for something or another, and um, spread evenly in the bottom of the pan. And it said, on two separate lines, one of it said, I was overweight, and the other one said I was obese because my body mass index was 25 to 29. Why both? I mean, is it necessary to really kind of mess with me that way? Good morning, Lisa. Yes, Gail, frozen peaches should work as well. Hello, Linda. Hi, Laurie. Okay, so peach pie filling. There we go, all spread out evenly on the bottom of our baking dish. I didn't lick it. Okay, now we need a big old mixing bowl. Bob, here's our Bob today, a big old mixing bowl. There we go, okay? So in our big old mixing, big old mixing bowl, we're gonna dump the following ingredients. And I measured them all out. You're jealous because I have all these little bowls, right? But if you pre-measure everything before you get cooking, then you know you have everything, and then when you go to put everything together, it's just dump, 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 which I really like. That's not the bowl I'm using. That bowl goes over there. This is the bowl I'm using, because it has my other ingredients in it. So, we're gonna need a big old bowl. I'm using my Danish batter whisk. Yay, thank you, Joanne, for my Danish batter whisk. Hey, Lori. Um, you can use a hand mixer, you can use a stand mixer. You can use whatever. Well, according to them, I am obese. So there you go. All right, so we're gonna put these in and here we go. We need a three-fourths cup of flour. AP, all-purpose flour. In we go. We need three-fourths cup of instant oats. Now, we just had, we just made granola. Um, we just made granola on Saturday. So we've gone through the difference of steel-cut oats, rolled oats, and instant oats. For this particular recipe, do not use the rolled, do not use the steel cut, or use the instant oats. There are the, sometimes they're called minute oats. Sometimes they're called quick oats, whatever. You ordered the whisk last week? Oh, Lori, it is awesome. This is like one of the best inv uh, inventions ever. And you wouldn't think it by looking at it, right? Okay, oats go in. Now we need a whole cup, those were three fourths. This is a whole cup of brown sugar. Cindy. Is it light brown sugar or is it dark brown sugar? In this particular recipe, it doesn't really matter. Remember that the difference between light brown sugar and dark brown sugar is the amount of molasses in the sugar. So the dark brown, or the dark molasses necessarily, sorry, the dark brown sugar 
necessarily has more molasses in it, that's what makes it darker, than the light brown. I like that rich, dark molasses taste, so I have the dark. But if all you have is light, that's fine. Well, thank you that you don't think I'm obese, but I'm just telling you that's what the doctor said. Um, good morning, Sharon, good to see you. When you got the whisk, you thought it was broken? Oh, because of, yeah, it just doesn't look right, does it? You're like, is that right? But it is. Okay, so we have three-fourths cup of flour, three-fourths cup of instant oats. You're moving in. Come on over, JB. You are more than welcome anytime. Uh, and then we have a cup of brown sugar. Now we're going to need the measuring. Measuring. We're going to need one teaspoon. Teaspoon. Where is my... I swear I'm going blind. One teaspoon of cinnamon, and you know what I'm using, right? You can use your regular old boring cinnamon, but I'm telling you, Saigon cinnamon. Again, from my friend Joanne. She also gave me this cool pen. Is that the coolest pen? I use this to write on with everything now, because I feel like I'm a princess. La la la. Well, I am a princess, according to my husband. Although, you prefer the dark too? Yummy, I know. You're supposed to be working on witness collection. This is much better. <laughs> Hello, Tracy. Good to see you. Okay, so one teaspoon. Again, remember, if you have never tried this Saigon cinnamon, it is a little slice of heaven. Regular cinnamon, just like listening to piano music. It's okay. It's nice. But this, oh, one smell. It's a symphony of cinnamon. So there you go. One teaspoon we needed of that. We're going to need a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Let me get, find the half a teaspoon one. I am, you know what, I'm, there we go, okay. Going blind, going blind, I tell you. And my nutmeg is just in here. I'm wondering if I shouldn't try to find the coolest nutmeg ever. I don't know. All right, so, and then a pinch of salt. Okay, just a pinch. What kind of salt, Cindy? Whatever kind of salt you have. This is kosher salt, just a pinch. Remember, salt goes in savory but salt also goes in our sweet dishes because salt is a flavor enhancer. There you go. A half a cup of melted butter, which is one stick, okay? In we go, melted butter, yum. So really, that's our only liquid. What, Cindy, that's the only liquid? Yes, that's it. Because this is a crisp, okay? So what we're doing is we're getting that butter will uh, whisk. So see, it's crumbly, but you've got some larger chunks, right? Oh, so good. Okay, so you're going to add... Oh, thank you, Presley. I buy all my Polish pottery from morepolishpottery.com. She's been my friend for years, and she only stocks first quality Polish pottery. So you can bake in these. You can put them in the dishwasher, the microwave, the freezer, blah, 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 blah. You know. Lori... Oh, it's the most interaction I get all day, too. I had a reaction to the Saigon cinnamon. Oh, broke out in hives. That's awful. I wonder what was in the cinnamon. Oh, that's terrible. No, I'm a good mama. <laughs> all right, so now <clears throat> we have our baking dish. We sprayed. We got our can of pie filling. We spread evenly. Easy enough, right? Now, we're going to take our topping, and we're going to put that on top. Now, you can be gentle and use your hand and put it, you know, oh, I'm going to be very particular about where you put this. But you know me, Cindy's the dumper, okay? And quite frankly, there's enough right there. There's enough right there that we can spread it evenly and it's all yummy fine, okay? Look at this. Look, look, look. Ta and da. Is that the most beautiful thing ever? 350 to, Can you post her link? I certainly will, Presley. Jody, I know it does look good. Oh, thank you, Lori. I, I appreciate that, Presley. Lori has posted the link. Okay, in the stove, it, um, in the oven it goes. 350 degrees, 20 to 30 minutes. Just really depends on your oven. It's, I always am like, I, I don't say 20 minutes, take it out. Because really, how does your oven cook? Is it old, is it new? Are you using convection? I, you know, I don't know these things. You love that dish? Look, look, Janet, look what I have. Mmm. Okay, another sip. Hold on. Mmm. Now you say, I was gonna answer the question. There goes that recipe. Go away. What is the difference? Rebecca is amazing. Jody, Rebecca is amazing. 
It's okay. Oh, Alice, you're making dill pickles. Yum. I love making dill pickles. So you say, Cindy, you just called that a peachy keen crisp. Why is it a crisp and not a crumble? What's the difference between a crisp, a crumble, and a cobbler, you ask? Oh, you got it in the pine cone pattern? Mmm, pretty. Here's the difference. A cobbler are fruit desserts that are baked with a biscuit-style topping. So more of a, of a biscuit kind of crust on the top, even if you're using flour, right? It's got that kind of uh, cakey uh, topping, okay? Any rum chata vanilla in your coffee today? No, not yet, not yet, although I should have, Lori. Um, a crumble, which is not what we made, a crumble, uh, those toppings do not contain oats. And because they don't contain oats, um, it doesn't crisp up the top of it, and so the topping is more cakey. So if you're looking for um, instead making a, a peach crumble instead of a peach crisp, you would do the same thing but omit the instant oats, and as a result, the topping will be more cakey. Now, because we have added the instant oats, it magically becomes a crisp. And why is that? Because and you can add nuts. I didn't add nuts, but you obviously could add nuts to that. Um, and so, because we've added the instant oatmeal, it will crisp up a little bit more. So then, instead of a cakey, you, you really have a different texture. So it's just up to you. Do you want it crispier? Do you want it cakier? Do you want it biscuity-er? I'm adding a bunch of errs on there, right? So there you go. Let's talk about National Peach Pie Day. That's what today is. Do you know that nobody knows who invented it or who said we should do it? But it's usually um, celebrated August 24th. Um, and usually, I mean, you know, the reason they pick this time is because it coincides with peach harvest season, right? Because that's where we are. Generally speaking, there are two types of peaches I'd hope to show you. Type A and type B today. And yet, because of the salmonella in the peaches at Kroger, no peaches, I tell you. There is a freestone peach and a clingstone peach. Freestone, clingstone. And the difference is the way the flesh comes away from that pit in the center, right? So if it comes away freely, right, if it, if it pulls away when you cut it, um, then it's a freestone peach. Okay, this makes sense, right? If it's stuck, you know, it's, it's hard to get off and you're kind of cutting around it. That's a clingstone peach. So that's pretty easy, right? You cut your peach around. If you pull and it comes away really easily, ta-da, freestone peach, because it came away freely. If you cut it and you're trying to get it apart and you're doing one of these and you don't have arthritis, it's a clingstone peach because the meat or the flesh of the peach clung to the pit. Did you learn something today? Did you? Of course you did. While Georgia is always the first state that comes to mind when we think of peaches, California actually leads the nation in production. In the United States, there are 20 states that produce peaches commercially. South Carolina, even New Jersey. Do we have anybody from New Jersey today? New Jersey makes peaches, so there you go. Pennsylvania and Washington grow a lot of peaches as well. Um, more peach facts. Obviously, Georgia is known as the peach state. Peach harvest is between June and August. Uh, <coughs> the har <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> goodness, I got, the peaches were so exciting. Harvest from each peach tree lasts only one week. That's it, you gotta get it all done. A medium peach weighs about 2.6 ounces. Really? Peachy keen. You learn something. Um, and it has 30 calories. Why do we care about that? I just use peach pie filling. That has a lot more calories. Let's move on to our pie. Because even though it's National Peach Pie Day, I am not making, because come on, am I traditional? I am not making a traditional peach pie. That is just not going to happen. And I have no fresh peaches. So here we go. Uh, we are gonna start with your pie dish. And I'm cheating, because you know how I am, and I'm using refrigerated pie crust. I'm bad that way. All right, so my recipe, ooh, hold on. Ugh. My recipe says to put the pie crust in and to put it in the refrigerator, which I have done. I'm not exactly sure why. 
I am not a chef, hello. I just follow instructions. So there you go. Now, that being said, I'm going to tell you that because this is Polish pottery, Polish pottery is not supposed to go from one extreme to another, right? So something really cold should not go in the microwave or the oven. It can go in the microwave and the oven as long as it's room temperature. Because of that, I'm not gonna preheat my oven. I'm just gonna put it in and add 10 minutes to the cooking time. If you are not using Polish pottery, shame on you. No, if you're not using Polish pottery, if you're using a Pyrex or any other kind of pie dish, then um, you can go ahead and preheat your oven, refrigerate it, and stick it in there. Have I done a poke cake? Oh yes, Presley, love poke cakes. All right, so that was in the refrigerator. I'm sure it'll be fine. Another bob. Get out your bob, your big old bowl, okay? I'm gonna use this again, so hold on. Let me get that, let me get the stuff off. Okay, all right. In a large bowl, here we go. We're gonna add a stick of melted butter, burgundy berry green, I know. Isn't it a pretty pattern? Burgundy berry green, there we go. A stick of butter, stick of butter melted. Lots of butter this morning, huh? Butter, butter, butter. And we're gonna put in butter, sugar, there's a lot of sugar in this one. This is a cup and three-fourths of white granulated sugar. I know, you're like, Cindy, really? Yes, yes, a lot of sugar. There were some clumps in there. I don't know why. Okay, I'm breaking up the clumps. Okay, there we go. Ta and da. All right, and we're gonna add our vanilla. I don't have any, I mean, I have the crappy, a crappy, I have regular vanilla, but I'm using my caramel vanilla just because I can. And we need two teaspoons, two, I tell you, two teaspoons of regular, of, just use regular vanilla, whatever vanilla you have. One, although not the crappy vanilla, because you know that lady on Food Network, and now me, says that the regular vanilla is icky. She's right, but there you go. Okay, so now we're gonna take, I'm gonna use my whisk again. Obviously, you know what? You can use a hand mixer. It's just something else for me to get all the parts out and then clean, and I don't have um, an, ex I have to use an extension cord so you can see what I'm doing. So there you go. Okay, we mix all that up. La, la, la. We can just eat this, butter, sugar, and vanilla. <gasps> Let's just eat that too, right? Okay, that's all we got. We got that in there. Now we're gonna add eggs, four of them, four eggs. Is it important to use brown jars for, for vanilla? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, you don't want to leave your vanilla out where the, you know, like the sun could hit it. That's, you know, you don't want to do that. But most of us keep vanilla in the cabinet anyway, so that's not really a big deal. Um, really, I just thought it looked cool. <laughs> that's so bad. It's the only reason I bought the brown jars. It looks cool. So there you go. Four eggs, okay? Are we ready? One. Two. Three, buck, buck, I should, I should have chicken stuff. Three, ta and da, there you go. I sent my daughter a text this morning and said, rise and shine, Mary Sunshine, good morning, I hope your first day of class goes great. And it was like at seven something, because she has a class at eight. Um, yeah, I'm not certain, Lori. Anyway, she has a class at eight. And so I send this out, she doesn't respond, she doesn't respond, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gonna be late for class on her first day. She needs to get up, she needs to have breakfast. I'm doing all the mama stuff, right? Bad mama. And um, I notice that she's still in her dorm room and I'm kind of freaking out. She finally responds back. Class doesn't start till tomorrow. Oh, her classes, she doesn't. Um, I need one of those, it is neat, isn't it, Presley? It's called a Danish batter whisk. Danish batter whisk. You can get it on Amazon, or there are several kitchen stores that sell them. Okay, so we added our eggs. What else are we gonna add? We are gonna add half and half. Do you have half and half? There you go. Oh, I need my measuring cup. You think I would be better prepared, and yet not. Okay, Polish pottery needs a measuring, a measuring cup, don't you think? I'm sure they have one. All right, we need one quarter cup of half and half, one quarter cup. La, 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 there we go. Put that in there. I love half and half. And you know what? If you, 
This is what I've done before. If you don't have half and half, but you have heavy whipping cream and 2% milk, mix them together. <laughs> it's half and half. I'm so bad. So bad, I tell you. All right, now we have all of that, and we're gonna add, this is gonna sound weird, but we're gonna add white vinegar. <gasps> Cindy, this is a pie. You're gonna add vinegar? Oh yes, trust me. Trust me, my friends. We're gonna use a tablespoon. That's the big one here. You can tell on Life360 if their phone is plugged in and charging. You know if they're awake, because it's no longer charging. <laughs> Thanks, Julie, good to know. I know, we're stalking our children. So just plain old white vinegar, okay? I know. You know, we were, my husband and I were talking about like when we went to college, you know, there was no cell phones. And in some places, you didn't have a phone in your room. There was like a pay phone at the end of the hall. You called, people hollered out, is John here? You know, there you go. And of course, when I went to college, one tablespoon, okay? When, make, yeah. When I went to school, there was a girls dorms and boy dorms. Completely different buildings. Here, it's different floors. That does not fill me with joy. As a mother, it does not fill me with joy to know that they're on different floors. But there you go. Me too. All right, so here we go. We're also going to use a tablespoon. That's why I wiped it out. I wiped, see, I, I just wiped it out a little bit. The next thing we're going to use is a tablespoon of, of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. The stuff we make cornbread out of? Why, yes, the stuff we make cornbread out of. One tablespoon, in we go. I know, you're rolling your eyes at me. Rolling your eyes, I say. Okay, let's mix all that up. Yummy. Except you're not thinking it's yummy, you're thinking it's weird. Weird, weird, weird. I know, I wouldn't want boys floating around. Um, our parents had no idea. This is my fervent prayer. I pray daily that my child will not be like I was when I was a freshman in college. Oh, I don't think there's anybody on the show right now that knew me when I was a freshman in college, and that is a good thing. We don't need any stories, thank you. Now, I have taken a 15 ounce can of sliced peaches, because remember, salmonella in the peaches, so no fresh one. When I was in college, you lived on a co-ed floor? Oh, I don't think I could do that. No, I don't wanna do that. And I don't want my daughter doing that, so there you go. A 15 ounce can of sliced peaches. I drain the peaches and then just dice them up. See, dice them up. If you're really lazy, don't dice them. But one giant bathroom for the whole floor, plus we had to be in the, oh. Okay, peaches in our batter. This is the, this is the peaches and cream pie, yum. Okay, we mixed all that up. La, 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 la. Okay, get your pie crust, pie crust. I heard you were something. Yeah, well, we're not even talking about that. We are not even going there. Okay, and we're gonna pour it in. Oh, look at that. Is that luscious? Oh, it's an awesome color. There are peaches everywhere. Hold on, let me get another doodah. Peaches everywhere. Is this the most glorious thing you've ever seen? Peaches and cream pie. Now, I'm gonna cook this on 300. Why? because I really, this is almost like a custard in here, and I really want this to set up. This usually takes um, an hour and 20 minutes, so I know you're going, that's a long time to cook, but it's on a lower temperature, and again, we want this to set up, and I'm only cooking it at 300, not at 350. That makes a big difference, okay? Look at this. Oh, oh, I can't wait to, okay. Mm. I know, raw eggs. There you go. Ta-da, our local college used to be a women's. That changed, I know. Is it just in Texas for the salmonella? No. Mm. Nationwide from this, it was a, I think it was a producer in California. So I don't know all, where all they went, but it specifically said Kroger. That's enough for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in my oven, 300, 300 degrees for an hour and 20 minutes. So obviously we, we won't be tasting this on this show. I'm going over. Okay. And there it goes. I have to show you something else I bought. 
This is not Polish pottery. Oh, it's probably good with pineapple too. <gasps> that would be good. But you know, I like dreamsicles growing up and so peaches and cream sounds good to me. Hello. Okay, I bought these. This is not Polish pottery. These are by Cuisinart. Cuisinart, see right there? And I just got them online. Oh, I have that one on backwards. Look at this. Are these the cutest things ever? Hello. They're little bitty kind of, but I like them because they're separated and you can grab, right? You can grab stuff. Like the ones that are just like the big mitt. I have a little trouble with my arthritic hands. This way, ugh, I just feel like, ugh, I don't know. It's better for me. So there you go. Hello. Goodbye. Okay. So any questions about peaches or peach keen or anything like that? They are cute, aren't they? Oh, okay. ah. I made a mess. I made a mess. Okay, move this. Questions, questions. Did you miss me while I was gone? I missed you guys. All right, ta and da. Saturday, we are gonna have our cook along. If you remembered, we talked about having a Cindy's Kitchen C-A-L, cook along. And we're gonna have that on Saturday. So either today or tomorrow, I will be posting on our Facebook page um, your shopping list or your ingredient list, or whatever. No, we're not making a cobbler, Melinda, because that requires a different topping. We're making a crisp. <clears throat> anyway, so Saturday is the cook-along, and we're gonna be making a soup. Now, that assumes that the hurricane is supposed to be here on Thursday or Friday, and that I'm still alive, and I'm not flooded out, and I have electricity. As long as all of those things occur, we will be doing a cook-along on Saturday and we'll be making a big pot of yummy soup. So there you go. All right, um, I'm gonna check the crisp, but I'm doubting, I have doubts. Oh, oh, it's almost there. I'm not gonna take it out, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna take it out because I want it really good. I will post pictures so that you can see exactly what it looks like. 